Do you need to clear out an extremely cluttered home for a family member, friend, or client? Well, you are in the right place because today I'm sharing one of my time-saving strategies you can use to get started in that space even when you are feeling overwhelmed. Hi, I'm professional organizer, Katherine Lawrence. I help you live a life with less clutter so you can have space for the things that truly matter. I'm one of the professional organizers working on this season of Hoarders currently available on A&E. I've worked as a professional organizer for the last 20 years and have tackled some pretty cluttered spaces in that time. And of course, you know the type of homes we work in on Hoarders. So today I'm sharing with you one of my favorite time-saving techniques when tackling an extremely cluttered or hoarded space. I call this technique easy to hard. This is a technique I use to clear the lovely time capsule of a room called the blue room for obvious reasons in Dolores's house. This was episode three, season 12 of Hoarders. I had the pleasure of working with Dolores's daughter, the lovely and kind Jenny to clear this room. We did it in a very short period of time, if I recall, just a few hours, and we did not just throw everything away. So let me explain this technique of easy to hard. When you are facing a wall of clutter, you have to start somewhere. You're making dozens, if not hundreds of decisions about the things in that room. What I'm gonna do is keep moving through that space, looking for things that are easier decisions versus something that is a harder decision. Let me give you an example. In the blue room, there was what we call in the biz contamination, meaning some mice had gotten into stuff and we knew we were gonna be very limited on the options we had for donating or keeping things in the home. And those items were mainly in the area of soft goods like pillows, linens, stuffed animals, just things that are really no good after they've had contact with rodents. So the decision was made that these items would be discarded. Something else that I would put in the easier category would be packaging. If you watch this episode, you can tell there was a lot of what I call shop and drop. So there was a lot of boxes and bags that were literally just the packaging of items uh, and the items inside may still be in good condition. The packaging would be an easy decision of something that could be recycled or tossed. Then there are items that will be harder to decide on. Many things in this room were more expensive items like collectibles that were still in boxes. Uh, these things were still good. Uh, they were still in good condition, so they could possibly be donated or used. Uh, we weren't quite sure what to do at that moment. So instead of stopping every couple of minutes to have you know, a discussion about what we should do with a particular you know, ceramic item or piece of china, we just put those into a, another category. And this was gonna be a harder category that we were gonna circle back and make those decisions a little bit later. When you are quickly clearing out an extremely cluttered room and you're sitting there for like 30 seconds or a couple of minutes debating about what to do with something and you can't really come up with a good idea, I would put that into the hard decision making category and I would delay that decision until you get all of the easier items in the room dealt with. Now, if you've hung out with professional organizers, you may have heard the concept of only handling things once. And that's an okay rule if you're dealing with just a light or daily clutter, but I do not think that technique works when you are dealing with a space that is extremely cluttered or hoarded. You're gonna spend too much time on these harder decisions, and what is gonna happen is that you're going to experience decision fatigue and lose momentum. So with this concept of easy to hard, what we're going to do is keep making easy decision after easy decision until we've cleared maybe 50% of the room or even more, then we're gonna circle back in and make some harder decisions once we are dealing with smaller categories of things. Trust me, this is a way more efficient way to clear a room. And once a decision has been made about a category like recycle all cardboard boxes or discard all contaminated household linens, you can now delegate those tasks to your helpers. 
So if I'm clearing out a room on hoarders, I could have one cleanup crew member removing boxes and packaging while another discards soft goods. Clear out process moves very quickly. Are you working on clearing out an extremely cluttered or hoarded home? Let me know what challenges you are facing in the comments below and subscribe to my channel for more tips on decluttering, downsizing, and the business of organizing. If you are a professional organizer who wants to get into the business of clearing out hoarded homes or find yourself in a position of needing to clear out an extremely cluttered home, check out my course called Tackle the Hoard so we can work through all the facets of clearing out hoarded houses together. I put a link to that course in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.